There are three types of diabetes, namely type 1, type 2, and gestational diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is where the body does not produce insulin and about 10% of diabetes cases worldwide fall in this category. Type 2 diabetes takes 90% of diabetic patients all over the world. Here, the body fails to produce enough insulin for proper function. Gestational diabetes occurs in women during pregnancy, and this is the least common type of diabetes among the three. Welcome to the program today as we zero in on diabetes. My name is Bill Hawaka, and here is a preview of what is ahead. Uh, I think avoiding eating too much sugar can be one of the remedies. Diabetes is manageable, is treatable, although has no cure, Patients should, have, should be able to enjoy their life. They should have quality life. Alongside with their diabetes, they should enjoy life. Push up, push up, arm straight. Yes, feel your abs stretching, feel your stomach stretching. About five years ago, an estimated world population of 382 million had diabetes. Diabetes is a long-term condition characterized by high sugar levels. We talked to members of the public to find out whether they have been tested for diabetes in their recent past. Here's what they had to say. Yes, I do. Um, exercise, um, um, not taking too much sugar. Yes, I think that's the only thing I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think I know a little bit about it. So yeah. what do you think are the possible remedies for diabetes? Uh, I think avoiding eating too much sugar can be one of the remedies. Yeah, like uh, you can take uh, less sugary foods. Yeah, and maybe you cannot take uh, soda all the time or you cannot take a tea with too much sugar. Yeah, I think that can be remedy to diabetes. Yeah, diabetes uh, is um, something to do with the lack of sugar, imbalance of sugar in the body. Yes, um, I think people drink a lot of juices. Mm -hmm. uh, for those that know, they do juice. And some they use some medicine. They, they are recommended to take every day. Okay. Yeah, and reducing pressure in your life. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Diabetes patients will present with signs such as frequent urination, intense thirst and hunger, weight gain or unusual weight loss, numbness and tingling in the hands and feet, fatigue, among others. We talked to Dr. Ruben Kahangi, who shared the following information with us. Diabetes is manageable, is treatable, although has no cure, patients should, have, should be able to enjoy their life. They should have quality life. Alongside with their diabetes, they should enjoy life. And uh, recent studies show that um, we are getting very high rates of diabetes in the rural areas. Reason being, um, somebody will eat ugali. Ugali is maize flour in the morning for breakfast. Eat the same ugali lunchtime or in the evening. Then they'll take rice in the evening. All that is starch. All, all those are foods that put you at risk of developing diabetes. And again, it's, it's become a staple food in Kenya. Ugali rice, ugali rice. If not ugali rice, then we are eating maize and beans. This same ugali made from maize, we are still eating the maize. So at the end of the day, you have so many carbohydrates. Uh, you have high levels of carbohydrates or rather high levels of glucose in your body throughout. It's a risk factor for diabetes. And that's why also we are finding very high numbers of diabetic patients among the poor because, again, lifestyle. We've also become um, copycats, to say. We want to emulate the Western kind of lifestyle, which, well, it's neither here or there, but essentially, fast foods are really quite dangerous to, di to diabetic patients and predispose us to diabetes. It's said that uh, obesity is a risk factor for developing type 2 diabetes. But it does not, uh, that doesn't mean that if you're obese, you will get type 2 diabetes. It doesn't mean that. And again, it doesn't mean that fat people are 
going to get diabetes. And again, for you to call someone fat, or rather to label this person as obese, there are several factors to put into consideration. Their height is number one, and their weight. Diabetes is not for fat people, but obesity, or rather being overweight, predisposes you to getting diabetes. And in this case, type 2 diabetes. But doesn't mean that if you're fat, you'll get diabetes. Doesn't mean that, yes. Diabetes is a non-communicable disease, and other non-communicable diseases are hypertension and cancer. So these are diseases by non-communicable. They're diseases that are not spread from one person to the other. They are not contagious. Uh, they are not carried from one person to the other. You develop it yourself, but you cannot be able to spread it like HIV. HIV is a communicable disease. Malaria is TB. Those are infectious diseases. They can be transmitted from one person to the other. So um, diabetes is really not a communicable disease and therefore is not contagious. So there is no need to stigmatize patients with diabetes. In fact, if well managed, you'll not even realize this patient is diabetic because their sugars are okay, their weight is okay, they're laughing with you and they lead quite a long life, although diabetes will tend to reduce their lifespan by close to 10 years, but they will lead quality life if well managed. The myth is they can't eat sugar. Well, we advise diabetic patients. Um, there's something called hypoglycemia. Is, is a condition whereby the patient has either too much insulin, so very low glucose, or they haven't eaten at all. So their glucose levels go down and they get hypoglycemia. So and uh, it's for, for them to treat this hypoglycemia, we encourage them to eat sweets before they are able to get uh, to eat a decent meal or to get to hospital for further management. So what we advise them is to reduce on their sugar intake, but not completely eliminate sugar intake. S reduce significant reduction in sugar intake. If they were taking three teaspoons, three tablespoons, well, we advise them to reduce at least, or to use honey. Honey is an alternative to using sugar. They can use honey. Honey is uh, quite good um, for them. I instead of eating bread, they can eat sweet potatoes, although not in large quantities, but at least sweet potatoes really do not uh, release too much glucose at the same time. Use glucose in bits, so it doesn't affect them that much. So again, it all points down to lifestyle modification, diet modification. But we do not completely eliminate because uh, if they're hypoglycemic, they will need some sugar to bring them up. And when they come to hospital, we'll give them sugar in form of dextrose to bring them up. The myth is diabetic patients should not play sports. And I would like to correct that and say that uh, diabetic patients should enjoy life and should, have, should lead quality lives. And di a diagnosis of diabetes should not be a life sentence for any diabetic patient at any time. So it's important for them to play as we said, it's also important for them to exercise, and some of them exercise through sports. The only thing is that they need to do that with caution. Before they engage in the sports, they need to ensure their blood sugars are within normal, or they're well controlled, and their insulin levels are also within normal. This is a way we advise them to do it just before they engage in the sports. But they shouldn't be told not to play sports. Yeah, life should be enjoyed though to some extent. They, they need not to do it in excess, just with moderation. On the, the nature of exercise they need to do depends on the person, uh, person's feeling and taste. If someone likes to play soccer, they can play soccer. As long as their sugars are okay, then they're, if they feel any symptoms, they, they are able to manage themselves, either take some sugar or insulin. Key thing is for them to know how to manage their sugars while playing and how to manage their insulin levels while playing. So they can engage in whatever sport they wish to engage in. As long as they are not alone, they shouldn't engage in the exercise alone because you never know, they could go into hypoglycemia and just collapse and there's no one to assist them. They should engage in sports, whatever. They can swim, they absolutely can swim, but again, with moderation, not too much. They shouldn't be in, well, in swimming competitions, that is debatable, but shouldn't be excessive. They, then they can engage in 
whatever exercise they, they want to engage in. Well, the only thing is uh, sports. Well, is safari rally sports? That will be quite risky for them, being a diabetic. But if well managed, again, they can partake. Again, not alone, though. They need to be well controlled and with the, with the permission from the doctor and those involved in the management. Whether you are a diabetes patient or not, it is important that you eat right. Your daily diet makes a difference in diabetes management and the energy levels you will have for your day-to-day -day activities. We talked to the nutrition expert who enlightened us with the following knowledge. Hello everyone, welcome to Health and Flavor. This is our nutrition segment and we are glad to have our nutrition expert, Mr. Kefa Nainumba. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. So, uh, glad to see you, by the way. Thank <clears> you so much. So then today, our case study, we're going to focus on diabetes. Yes. Uh, our patient's name is Mr. Duncan. That is not his real name. So Mr. Duncan is 15 year, uh, 55 years old. Yes. And uh, he's um, having diabetes. Yeah. Yes, so then uh, we look at um, the complaints that he's been having so far when he was coming to you for, uh, for nutrition advice. Yeah. He was having frequent urination, uh, weight loss, uh, fatigue. Fatigue. Yes. Blood vision. Blood vision. Yeah. So tell me uh, about this. Yeah, uh, just to talk a little bit about uh, diabetes. Yes. It's actually common yeah. nowadays. And we have uh, different types of uh, diabetes. We have uh, diabetes type 1 that affects children. We have diabetes type 2 affects adults. And we have gestational diabetes that affects uh, women during uh, pregnancy. All right. So when people get diabetes, most of them will actually complain of uh, some of these uh, symptoms. Okay. Yeah, like uh, fatigue is usually very common. There are people start losing weight. We know that nowadays everybody wants to lose weight. But uh, at times when it happens without you doing anything about it, it mm. means it uh, can be a, a sign of uh, diabetes. Okay. Some people, you know, start experiencing frequent urination at night during the course of the day. Yeah. So when that happens, of course, it's important uh, that they check their, their blood uh, glucose levels. Right. And uh, that's why we recommend that people go for regular checkups because you never know that we have some of these conditions. And that was the case with uh, Duncan. Okay. Yes. So then uh, we look at a bit about the dietary history of Mr. Uh, Duncan. Yeah. Uh, we see that he takes four cups of black tea. Of black tea. And uh, he takes with three uh, teaspoons of, of, uh, of sugar. Yes. Now, when it comes to diabetes management, nutrition intervention is such a very, very important because uh, nutrition is such one of the components of, uh, of lifestyle. Yes. So, uh, where, of course, when such patients actually come to see us, first and foremost, we're interested to know what are they taking. Uh, especially for Duncan, you could actually take, uh, you know, uh, black tea <coughs> yes. plus uh, uh, processed sugar. Yes. You see, for somebody who has diabetes, of course, they yeah. are not supposed to take uh, uh, processed sugar. Because their this body cannot is be able. Sugar, yeah, right? this is processed sugar. All right. Their body does it matter able. the color? Sometimes there's white okay. kind of sugar, brown. Yeah. But does okay. it matter? The, the challenge is uh, that most of the processed sugars actually don't have a, a nutrient called chromium, which is a very important nutrient. All right. Yeah. So and that is why their body cannot be able to handle, you know, the the processed sugar. All right. So we really don't recommend any form and of sugar. Of processed yeah, sugar. Yeah, for the people who have uh, diabetes. Di diabetes. Then. Uh, yeah. So just to make adjustments in terms of uh, is in terms of his tea, what you you could actually do is uh, try to add some milk to the tea so that at least you can get some nutrients because he also needs nutrients like uh, calcium for example uh, mm. instead of the tea you can actually add cinnamon cinnamon is very good because it tends to control insulin production so cinnamon is very important it's actually very good you could also in case it doesn't have cinnamon you can also use ginger ginger is also very good in right. terms of uh, yeah, in terms of uh, blood sugar control, so so those are some of the adjustments that you can actually make to EST, and that will be important in terms of uh, blood sugar control. Okay. Yeah. Then I also see that uh, bread. Uh, this person, uh, Mr. Duncan, likes bread, sodas, yeah, and uh, reports a skipping of meal uh, over it's, some meals, yeah, and uh, also does not like green Fate, leafy vegetables. Yeah. Now, uh, from that. The history, we can actually actually see that uh, he has cravings for sugary foods. Yes. And uh, he needs to make sure that he gets rid of all the sugary foods. Okay. Yeah, number two, he needs to stop skipping meals. Yes. Which actually tends to interfere with the blood glucose control. Okay. He needs to, take, to, to make sure that he takes, uh, you know, bre breakfast, he takes lunch, he takes uh, dinner. Yes. Because, uh, you know, not doing that sometimes interferes with the blood sugar control. I know some people are not able to take three meals because of uh, digestive issues, for example, and that needs to be addressed. Okay. Yeah. 
So tell me about this taking a lot of water. You yeah. say that taking a lot of water uh, is not necessarily good. Yes, it depends uh, because one of the uh, uh, symptoms of uh, uh, diabetes yes. is uh, is uh, uh, thirst. Yes, you feel like you need to take water throughout the throughout, day. Yes. So at times people end up taking three liters, five, four liters, five liters, and to make it worse, at times it usually happens at night right. when we need to rest. Which is so not when that good. happens, of course, that is not good because our body still needs rest. All right, and of course, such people need to check their their blood sugar. Okay. Yeah. So then now, when we're still looking at the nutrition intervention, yeah, uh, you see, of course, adding milk to the black uh, tea and. Yeah. Uh, cut off taking sugar, Yes. then uh, again, uh, what will they have to do about uh, now taking fruits and... Okay, they also need to make sure that they take the other foods because our body usually needs, uh, you know, uh, different nutrients yes. to assist in terms of uh, functioning. All right. Now, but when we talk about our food intake, for especially for the people of their diabetes, yes. the most important thing they need to consider is the glycemic index of the foods. All right. That is the what rate is at the which index? is the rate at which different foods affect our blood sugar. All right. Yeah. For example, uh, a banana would affect uh, blood sugar actually faster than an orange because of uh, fiber. Okay. So if somebody may, may want to take a, a fruit as a snack, I would prefer that an orange would be good compared to a banana. How about an avocado? An avocado not bad because in any case it contains what you call the unsaturated fats, which are the good fats. Okay. So avocado is okay. Okay. Uh, peanuts can also be good. Why? Because uh, proteins usually take a bit of time for digestion which is also good for people who have, uh, who have uh, diabetes like uh, Duncan. Okay. Yes. So then how about the... <clears throat> the starches? Yes. Now, I remember I said that uh, for Duncan and other people who have their diabetes, they need to make sure that they are taking their meals. And of course, their meals are supposed to be balanced in the sense that they're supposed to have some vegetables and proteins and starches. Yes. Now, when we talk about starches, we know that we have different types of starches. For example, for breakfast, yes. Duncan is taking white, white bread. bread. So white bread is actually refined and that tends to affect sugar more than the, 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 the brown bread. So I would prefer that it switches to the brown bread. Now, when it comes to the meals, you can actually go for brown rice instead of the white rice. White rice. Because rice, white rice affects sugar more than the brown rice. Okay. Of course, we have so many other starches that can be good for Duncan. All right. Yes. So then uh, tell me about, uh, finally, I the see we have also vegetable salad. Yes. yes. Vegetables are also important as, uh, as part of our diet. Now, Duncan doesn't like uh, uh, vegetables. And yes. It needs to start introducing vegetables to its diet because vegetables actually tend to slow down the rate at which, uh, you know, uh, our cells actually get uh, glucose from the blood. Okay. And that is very good when it comes to people of their, their, their diabetes. diabetes. Yeah. Okay. So, for example, we have the salads. I see we have cucumber, yes, lettuce. Yes, we have cucumbers, we have lettuce, we have onions, we have tomatoes. Yes. All these vegetables are actually good, provided they are taken with some protein and, and starch. Right. They are very good. They also contain some uh, compounds we call... Antioxidants, okay, yes. yeah, which are actually very important in terms of uh, the body functioning. It assists our body to function the right way. All right. Yeah. So then, <clears throat> when it comes to fruits, you yeah. suggest that bananas are high in sugar. Yes, of course we have others. Like citric also, fruits. Yes, yeah, citrus fruits are good. Yeah, All those right. ones are good because they, they don't have a lot of sugar. But of course we have others like pineapples. Of course they might affect sugar than the citrus fruits, and that's why it's important for 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 a few us to understand that they need to sit down with the nutritionist so that can, they can be able to get a program that addresses all these issues. All right. Yes. So then this wraps it up for us uh, today, and we've come to the end of this segment. For our viewers back at home, keep this in mind that all diabetic patients should make sure that they keep in constant check with the nutritionist. Up until next time, bye bye. Thank you. Family history is a risk factor in diabetes. This is in addition to other factors such as sedentary lifestyle, increasing age, just but to mention a few. Physical activity is a vital element of the treatment plan. A study by Center for Disease Control and Prevention proved that type 2 diabetes can be reversed through diet and exercise. Key to note in this study is the fact that remission is an exception rather than the rule. Our fitness expert gave us the following advice. Yes, our viewer, back at home, you can do these sets, this warm-up, like times, three times, three repetitions. Okay. Yes, give me a number. Give me how many repetitions? Ten. Ten. Mm. I'm looking for 100. But you can try with 50. Okay. So... Oh, we first start with 20. Okay. After 20, we pause, right? Okay. Okay, let's go. One, two, four, six. 
I can start again. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I can wait. <laughs> you can wait? Eh? Yes. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay. Yes, we have. That more remaining, mm. right? That more. Yes. Are you ready? Okay. You don't look. You don't look ready. Get ready. That's five, four, three, two. Okay. Let's go. That is the number. Thirty. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 20 more. Yes, we are cycling. Cycling, okay? Yes, well, on our. It has effect on our abs. Let's go. One, two, faster. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more. <gasps> hey. Ten more? Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How was that? Wow. Ah, it's okay. Energy okay. Okay. spent. Now we are in the let's see the part of stretching. We have to cool down. Okay. Yes, we have to uh, to be finishing our coat for the day. Okay. Yeah. Remember, our viewer at home has we have already done 20. You do 20 times 3, that's 60. Okay, let's go for our stretching. We stand up, eh? No, like this. We lie on our abs. It's called a cobra stretch. Okay. Like, we are like this. Down. On our abs. Yes, arms beside your shoulders. Arms here. Here, here. Yes. Yes, there. Mm. Now, only pull or push up, push up, arm straight. Yes, feel your abs stretching, feel your stomach stretching. That's five, four, and engage your throat. It's called a cobra stretch, like a cobra. Okay. Hmm, down, down. Now go for the legs. Now push your bust away from the mat. Your bust. I love you. Yes. Bust. Away from the mat. Okay. Now do baby, baby pose. Now pose like a baby. This is what I mean. Feel it on your back. That's five, four, three. Mm, stretch your arms. Stretch your arms, come sir. Mm -hmm. Arms complete again. Again. Now sit on your like on your shoes. Okay. Two and one. Up. Up, up. On your knees. Now sit like this. Yes. So now we have come to the end of our workout for the day. Okay. How was it? Wow, it was quite some exercise. As the risk of cardiovascular disease is much higher for a diabetic, it is crucial that blood pressure and cholesterol levels are monitored regularly. Smoking may have serious effects on cardiovascular health and therefore diabetics should stop smoking. Having heard from the doctor, fitness expert and the nutritionist, you don't have to deal with conflicting message about what to do and what to eat and how to live in order to keep diabetes under control. I am Dr. Fasaz Agai, a general surgeon, a public health specialist. Let me add a nugget or two on the subject of today, diabetes mellitus. Diabetes is a condition that affects the ability of the body to use blood sugar for energy. Type 2 diabetes is the most common form of diabetes. 
Nine out of ten people don't know they have it. Healthy lifestyle choices can help you prevent diabetes. It is particularly important to make diabetes prevention a priority if you are at increased risk of diabetes, such as if you are overweight or you have a family history of the disease. Number one, do this. Physical activity takes some glucose out of the blood to provide energy during and after exercise. This lowers blood glucose levels. Exercise helps you control weight, uses up glucose as energy and makes cells more sensitive to insulin. Number two, if you are overweight, diabetes prevention may hinge on weight loss. Every kilo you lose can improve your health and regular exercise can help one to reduce the risk of developing diabetes by almost 60%. Number three, excessive use of alcohol may cause chronic inflammation of the pancreas, which can impair its ability to secrete insulin and potentially lead to diabetes. My advice to you is stop taking alcohol if you are currently consuming alcohol. Number four, stop smoking since tobacco use can increase blood sugar, blood sugar levels and lead to insulin resistance. People who smoke heavily more than 20 cigarettes a day have almost double the risk of developing diabetes compared to people who don't smoke. Number five, if you are more than 45 years old and your weight is normal, ask your doctor if diabetes testing is appropriate for you. I'd love to end the show on a light note through this witty quote by an anonymous writer who once said, don't worry, diabetes only complicates my life on days ending in Y. Well, that means every day. I have been your host, Bill Hawaka. Thanks for watching Health and Flavor. See you next time. Bye-bye. <music>